One year ago today, April 15th, 2020, it was known as Black Wednesday. The WWE released over like 30 or 40 superstars, officials, referees, backstage producers, etc. During the midst of a global pandemic, nonetheless, right as it's getting started. One year later, April 15th, 2021, when WWE are making an all-time high in budget, they have to make budget cuts because it's that time of the year again. It's Black Thursday, folks, and I absolutely hate that I have to do this, but I have a list with now 10 names on it, and we're going to go over every single superstar that has been released today. I hope for the love of God that th this list is not outdated by the time I'm done. One of them was just added as of about like a half hour ago, so this is every superstar that has been released on Black Thursday, April 15th, 2021. So earlier today, I think the first two to start it off, it was like, oh, Billy Kay and Mickey James had been released. This came from out of nowhere. Let's just go over a third one too. Both members of the now former Iconics, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. We'll start with those two. They split up the Iconics for some reason. The one of, if not the only, real feeling tag teams in a women's tag team division that's desperate for tag teams that are actual tag teams rather than picking two names out of a hat. Uh, Nia and Shayna, Mandy and Dana. Uh, Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce, throw you together, those are, those are your tag teams. So they split up the Iconics, Peyton Royce does absolutely nothing, then forms a random tag team with Lacey Evans, while Billy Kay goes over to SmackDown. To her credit, she is very, very hilarious, she's very, very entertaining, does some fun stuff, she had her resume, she was trying to find a new tag team partner, that was fun. And then Peyton Royce, she started having a little singles push, she went on Raw Talk, she cut one heck of a promo. Haven't seen her since. I think she might have had one match with Asuka maybe a few weeks ago. And now they're both gone. And Billy Kay, just less than a week ago, was on WrestleMania in a huge tag team turmoil match alongside Carmella. So, what could have been with the Iconics? They won the women's tag titles at WrestleMania. That's probably the, the most I've been invested in the women's tag titles. Because other than that, it's just uh, Iconics split up. Riot Squad split up. But then we'll throw them back together. Uh, Nia and Shayna, you're a team. Mandy and Dana, you're a team. Lana and Naomi, you're a team. Uh, Charlotte and Asuka, you guys are a team for some reason. And to me, this is the most shocking and most upsetting one. Samoa Joe! I know you guys obviously know that Samoa Joe's been released by now, but let's talk about it anyways. If there's anybody on the roster right now in 2021 that I want to see just have a killer run, be WWE Champion, it would be Samoa Joe. He's just so good. He's arguably the best on the mic in all of WWE. I'd say he's one of, if not the best promos in all of wrestling. I put him up their top five alongside maybe MJF, maybe like MVP who's been very, very good over the past year. And it just sucks, he was a former NXT champion, two-time NXT champion, in fact. Comes up to the main roster, was just there. It was just, it wasn't horrible booking, he came up as a monster, but then it just felt like he lost and lost, and anytime he started picking up steam, he just lost another pay-per-view match. He had the stuff with AJ Styles, which was fun, but he lost pay-per-view match after pay-per-view match after pay-per-view match. And then he won the US title. And then he held on to it for a bit, then lost it, and then was there. And then injuries came up. It seems like every time he starts getting on a roll, he gets injured. Hasn't wrestled in like over a year now, but he's been on commentary. He's been very good at commentary. And I thought Samoa Joe was going to be one of these guys in WWE that once he's done wrestling, he'll be there as like a commentator, as an on-screen authority figure maybe, as maybe like a manager, somebody that can get physical when he needs to. He's just so good. He had a couple contract signing segments. Those were so good, I just felt like it fit him. Like, I wanted to see him wrestle. I wanted to see him as WWE Champion. But now he's not. But he's one of those guys. I don't want to start speculating. I don't want to start doing the Cody thing. Everybody's going to AEW because AEW, to me, have too many superstars. But I think he's one of those guys that are, is, good, is just going to show up. It's going to be huge. It's going to... Not quite to the level of Hogan back in the day of WCW, but it's going to be a very huge thing if and when Samoa Joe shows up in AEW. That's where I'm guessing he'll go. I talked about it a bit, but we'll go back. Mickey James. This is one that sucks because she had just returned not too long ago. She had like a weird, was it like a, a match where she lost by count out for some reason? Was that like her only match? Or no, I think she had a match with Asuka. Then she got injured again or something. But she was just on the TakeOver pre-show. She was there. She did commentary for a match. She was there as like a little analysis role. And just like Samoa Joe, this is a good role for her. Her days are winding down. She's not a spring chicken anymore. She's winding down her entering career. She can be there as like a color commentator you know, every once in a while, a special guest analysis, you know, obviously like a trainer, a backstage producer, something like that. But Mickey James is gone. And this one is really shocking, because I feel like it was just maybe a couple months ago, 
This is just revealed that Chelsea Green had just re-signed a multi-year contract. But now she's gone again. She came up to the Raw, came up to SmackDown rather. She came up to SmackDown. She was involved in a big match that she was supposed to win. I think it was what a Survivor Series qualifier. Then got injured. Then signed a new multi-year deal and then got cut. So she'll probably go maybe to Impact Wrestling. Bring Laurel Van Ness back. Go with her boyfriend Matt Cardona, who's not actually signed to Impact, but he's been in Impact for a while. He's just been doing some things. He did of course some things in AEW. But yeah, that's just out of nowhere. And now goes the section where it's people that's not super surprising, but obviously still hurts. Tucker, for example. We all knew when Heavy Machinery were there, when they started doing their thing, when Otis started doing his thing, becoming more popular. We all knew if and when Heavy Machinery were split up. We all know who the Michaels is going to be, and we all know who the Genetti's going to be. We all knew that Otis was going to go on, be the big star, because, you know, he's Otis, and, you know, he's very entertaining, he's very funny, and he's somebody that Vince McMahon would love. While Tucker, he's obviously a great wrestler, he's not as entertaining as Otis, he's not as charismatic as Otis, but Tucker's still entertaining in his own right, and he was a very fantastic wrestler. I remember there was a gauntlet match on SmackDown, and of course the Elimination Chamber match, where he did the huge somersault thing off of the pods, that was incredible. But Heavy Machinery split up, they didn't even have a match between Tucker and Otis, then Tucker donned some 80s pants, and I think has had two matches since like October, one of which was just a Battle Royal last week, so... <sighs> We've got Kalisto next. Kalisto's one of those guys that he's not going to go out and cut like a 20-minute babyface promo like your Drew McIntyre's, like your, your Roman Reigns, although he's definitely not a babyface, but he's not going to come out and do a big promo. As Kalisto famously said a number of years ago, just let him go out and do, and do Lucha things, maybe reunited with Lucha House Party. But he's just been there. Has he done a single thing since the Lucha House Party got like split apart? I don't think so. I think he was involved in one backstage thing with like Apollo Crews and Sami Zayn or something. Bo Dallas is next, and this one sucks because Bo Dallas was so entertaining. Back when he had his heel stuff in NXT, the Bo Leave stuff, that was so good. But then he came up to the main roster. It started off great. He had like, was it, didn't he have like an undefeated streak where he just beat a bunch of jobbers, you know, ran across the ring, did the Bo Leave stuff. That was fun. But then he was just thrown in with the social outcasts. He was thrown in with the B team, which was very entertaining, but then didn't really do anything after that. And it's been like... Over a year now since we've seen Bo Dallas, so this one's not really shocking. Two more now. Let's just say something. Of the three members of the Forgotten Sons, why is it that Jackson Riker is the one that's still employed? Of course, Steve Cutler was released a couple of months ago. And now Wesley Blake has been released. How come Jackson Riker? We all know the Jackson Riker situation, but even besides the whole controversial comments, it's just not entertaining in the ring. His stuff with Elias, I just don't care about him. Like... I didn't really care that much about Blake and Cutler, but that's just because they didn't really do anything anyways. But I cared more about them than Jackson Riker, but no, Jackson Riker's the one that's there. Jackson Riker's there every week on Raw with Elias getting beat up by Braun Strowman. And just recently, this was as of about like 45 minutes ago or so, Mojo Rawley. We're not hyped anymore. I feel like just about like six months ago or so, Mojo was one of the guys that signed a huge, like, was that like a five-year deal, three-year deal, something like that? Mojo signed a big contract. He's one of those guys that's a company guy. He's not the best in the ring, but he's very entertaining when he's getting hyped, bro. He, he's getting hyped, bro. Or, you know, other stuff. For example, when he's looking in a mirror, when he's got the face paint, he's got potential. He's solid in the ring. And he's very, he his little promos backstage, again, when he's like looking in the mirror stuff, that had potential, but it went nowhere. His stuff when he turned on Zack Ryder, that was good. That had potential. Obviously, his hype bro stuff, his little shenanigans and, you know, the Gronkster and the cool kid stuff, that's got potential, but no. So that is it. I thank you guys for watching. I guess this is the video that I definitely don't want to make, and I feel like there will probably be more once I edit this, once I upload this. It'll probably be outdated. We'll probably have some more releases, but... 10 Superstars released today as what's probably going to be referred to as Black Thursday one year ago to the day that it was Black Wednesday last year. I thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. Stay positive. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, news, reactions, all that kind of stuff and more. Stay safe out there. Stay positive, And I'll see you guys in the next one.